This is the Jazz DV151 digital camcorder. I found this at my local Goodwill store and I paid all of 99 cents for it. If you know anything about Goodwill, they lower the price until the very last day where they drop everything to 99 cents if they haven't sold yet. A very cheap plastic piece of consumer electronics manufactured, I believe, 2007 or 2008 time frame. Now, when I got it home, of course, it did not work. It was completely dead. So I opened it up. The way you open up the battery compartment is you, you depress this button and then you can slide this over. And there were two heavy duty batteries in here, both of which had leaked. It was zinc chloride leaked all over the place. I removed the two leaky batteries and I put in two fresh alkaline batteries and it still didn't work. So I'm going to need to open it up and see if I can't bring it back to life. The first thing is there are four screws on the back. They're located here, 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 and here. Now these two screws came out just fine. Unfortunately, these two screws had battery acid leaked on them and they were all corroded and I could not get a screwdriver on them for the life of me. I ended up having to just drill them out. It was the only way to open it. Now it still wouldn't open, so I figured there must be some other screws someplace. Now this LCD screen opens up like so. Of course, that way, if you're shooting a selfie, you can then see your own image in that screen. Now there was this sticker on here that covered up this entire surface. And I suspected that there were probably additional screws underneath it, so I carefully peeled it off. And indeed, there are. We have four more screws. One, two, three, and four. We've now removed all eight screws. Five of the screws are long, and three of the screws are short. I've laid them out here corresponding to where they are in the device. So if you're putting this thing back together again yourself and you can't quite remember which, and you can't quite remember where the screws went, it's this way. Long, long, short, short, long, 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 short. Now with the screws removed, we can now open up the device. Best to open it from this side, the right side here. Just pops right open. The reason we open it up from the right side is there's this tab right there, sort of hooked underneath here. Okay, so we put it back in reverse order. Okay, now we can open this thing up. Now that it's opened, we can see what it's made of. There's kind of a main circuit board right here, which has some sort of a CPU on it and a memory chip. There's uh, this USB port. It slides up like that. Over here we have the containers for the two AA batteries. This is the button board with a cable to that main board. And behind this piece of plastic is the LED board, also with a cable to the main board. It isn't obvious why the device isn't working. There's no obvious battery leakage on the circuit boards. One thing that I have found with experience is sometimes the connectors can get oxidized and you can develop a problem. This just happens with age. So I'm going to pull these connectors off and maybe polish them up a little bit. Now these connectors have a little, uh, I'm not sure what you call it, a little flip lock on it. Kind of get your fingernail underneath this thing and Pull it back like that. And the other one, we can pull it back like that. And out it comes. And also there's one up here. I'll leave that one in place for now. Now with flat cables like this, sometimes what I will do, I'll take a gum eraser like this and I'll sort of erase it like so. I'll sort of I'll run it this way with the pins like so. so i'm pressing down and then and then up again i'm not pushing back and forth because you'll damage the pins if you do it that way and on the other side same thing it 
just, just pulling this way, always with the pins. And that takes off some of the oxidation. Sometimes that'll fix a bad connection. I'll go ahead and put this back in. I put the flat cable back in and snap it down at both ends. I also cleaned this contact as well, but I didn't record that one. And now we will snap it back together again. And we start at this end because of this little latch right here. We have to kind of hook that latch underneath. And we get that we get that part hooked in on that side, and now we can just go ahead and snap the other side and Okay, that's it. It's back together. Now we just have to put those screws back in. Okay, we now have it all put back together again and ready to test it out. I put in a couple of AA batteries. Now, the one thing about this on off switch, you can't just momentarily hit it like that. Okay, you actually have to hold it for like a second. Okay, it is working. Excellent. So, Presumably, there was some oxidation on those pins, which was preventing the thing from working. That was a nice, easy, and lucky fix. We've turned it on, and it comes up and it says no card, meaning no memory card. This is the socket for the memory card. The manual says it takes an SD card, which it does. I also tested it with a high-density SD card, and it also works with that. I'm going to put in a relatively small memory card. This is a 256 megabyte card. And we'll turn it on again. On the screen, it tells you here what mode you're in. A picture of a movie camera. That means you're in movie clip mode. And this number here tells you how many minutes of movie you can shoot with that much memory, four minutes and 39 seconds. And here's your battery indicator. Looks like our batteries are down a little bit. We have a thing here called the mode switch. So we can switch from movie mode to still image mode. And now the indicator tells us we have enough room for 7,994 still images. The third mode allows you to view the images that you have stored. Okay, let's go back to movies. Low means low resolution. It means that the still images or the movies are shot at 240 by 320 resolution. That's pretty small. Switch it to high. High is 480 by 640. Which, which it, by the way, is VGA. That's the standard IBM came up with back in 1987. And it's roughly equivalent to standard definition television resolution. And it says we could shoot 2 minutes and 11 seconds of video at that resolution. Or, change the mode, 1,998 still images. Just a word about batteries and battery leakage. Really, be, be careful about leaving batteries in consumer electronics that you're not going to be using for a while. Battery leakage causes an awful lot of damage. And it has been my experience that so-called heavy-duty batteries, also known as zinc chloride batteries, cause a lot more damage than alkaline batteries. The zinc chloride is a powerful acid, and it really, really does a lot of damage. The alkaline batteries leak uh, potassium hydroxide, which is a strong base, it's just not nearly as corrosive, at least in my experience. So, number one, don't leave batteries and things for years without checking them. And number two, if you're going to use non-rechargeables, use alkalines. Don't use heavy-duty batteries. I have my cell phone camera pointed at one of my computer monitors. I have put up on the monitor two uh, video clips that I made with the Jazz DV151 camera. The one on the left is a 320 by 240 clip, and the one on the right is a 480 by 640 clip, VGA resolution. Now, the one on the left clearly is way too small to be of any use, I think. I think if you're really going to take any sort of uh, video clips with this camera, you'd really have to go with the high resolution, the 640 by 480. And just for comparison, I'm going to drag over a 720 by 1280 
So you can see what that looks like. Now, this clip was actually made on my cell phone. And this is the kind of thing that you would see standard on YouTube. And this is, would be pr pretty much the lowest level of high resolution, 720 by 1280 wide form factor. Now, maybe this one would be useful under some circumstances, but this, the 320 by 240, is just, that's just way too small. Now what I have are two video clips made by two different cameras. This is our Jazz DV151. The one on the left is a Kodak C182. It is more of a conventional camera. It produces 640 by 480 video clips, but it also produces still images as, as high as 12 megapixel. The film clips of the two cameras are similar. I think the Jazz DV151 on the right is slightly more washed out looking. There's a kind of a slightly yellowish tint and a little bit of glare. Perhaps that's an issue with the lens. The Kodak images also, to me, subjectively appear to be slightly sharper. But all in all, the images are fairly similar. Overall, I think the Kodak 640 by 480 images are slightly better. I did test the camera with nickel metal hydride batteries, and it does work. It does, however, report a lower voltage, which you would expect because nickel metal hydrides are 1.2 volts normally when fully charged, whereas alkalines are 1.5 volts. But it does work with rechargeable nickel metal hydrides. When putting the battery cover back on, start it about here, and then you have to you have to press down to depress that button, or press the whole thing down about like so, and then and then slide it in. Well, the good news is we were able to fix our 99 cent thrift shop find video camera. However, I would say as a camera goes, it's pretty inferior. I certainly would not use this thing for shooting any sort of still images. Uh, the 640 by 480 just is way too small for still images. Also, the lens is very limited. I mean, there's no zoom, there's no macro. For shooting video clips, I would say that it's just barely passable. 640 by 480 is a pretty small video image by today's standards. You might get away with it for some things. Almost any cell phone camera built in the last six years will run circles around this thing for still images or for video clips. One good thing about it is you can connect it directly to your computer's USB port and download the images. It doesn't require any special drivers or any special software. Another good thing is it uses standard AA batteries. It doesn't use some difficult to find expensive proprietary battery. And it uses SD or STHC memory cards, which are plentiful and relatively inexpensive. All in all, it's pretty cheaply built. I'm sort of surprised they were able to sell this thing for $35 back when it was new. But for a 99 cent thrift store find, it's not too bad.